Last year, we built a mountain bike trail in our backyard where I let you guys choose every feature that I built on it. This led to some pretty awesome stuff getting made. I would come up with two options to choose between and I'd let my subscribers vote on which one they wanted built. Honestly, the trail turned out really fun to build and extremely fun to ride. We even ended the year decorating the entire thing in Christmas lights. That was 2020, and now it's 2021, and I'm left with the simple question of how the hell do I top that? Well, about a quarter mile south of the old subscriber trail, I found an abandoned bridge. I have no clue how it got there, when it got there, or what it was going to be used for, but I can tell you for sure, it's gonna be used for mountain biking. This is Lanicera machii, better known as honeysuckle. It's best known as being an invasive species that does an amazing job at choking out native plant life. I take great pleasure in removing as much of this stuff as I can, but it is definitely a pain in the butt to do because you can't just remove one branch. If you take one branch, 10 more will come back in its place. Got this whole thing cleaned off. Now we gotta get an entrance up onto it. And once we get that, I'll show you what I'm planning to do here. We're not just gonna ride up through the center of this. We're gonna make it a challenge. This trail is going to be all about challenges, not only on the bike, but also with the builds. One of them you may have already noticed is I won't be using any power tools to build with. I really like the idea of everything being powered by the calories of our body, and I also love the control and meditative state that you get when doing things by hand. Start of the trail pretty much done. I like it a lot. I think it kind of adds like a little bit of a decorative flair to it. Really lets you know that there's a trail that's about to go up onto this bridge thing. So now we can start on the the thing I want to do on the bridge. Okay, so the plan right now is to try and get these little rungs here on the bottom side of this bridge a little more centered so that we can ride up on top of them. To do that, I'm gonna have to kind of wiggle this bridge around with these little bitty winches that I've got. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna work, they might break, and we might have to get some new ones, but yeah, let's do it. Ha! It's working off. out and a little bit of brainstorming, I decided the plan was to not simply ride over the concrete skinny that was readily available to us, but I wanted to create a teeter-totter on top of it. Luckily, I had some leftover cedar boards from last year to use, so I grabbed a few of those and started racking my brain on how I could attach this thing to the concrete. Now, I haven't said this yet, but the second challenge I'm giving myself for this entire trail is to not use any metal fasteners like screws, bolts, or nails. I really like the idea of only using what's available to me in the woods, and I think it's gonna be a really fun way to force me to be creative with how I build all of these wooden features. We have got our cut list here, a lot of pegs, a lot of uh, even littler pegs. But yeah, got everything mapped out. Let's go find some wood and start cutting some stuff. Sharp. And that's a sharp one. 
Look at that. That's insane. If you're wondering what the heck these tools are, you're not alone. I didn't even know they existed up until I started this project. The cone-shaped one is called a spoke pointer, and the one I follow it with is a hollow auger or tenon cutter. These tools were invented to speed up the process of making tenons that had a perfect fit back when we made wheels out of wood. And since we stopped making wooden wheels, these tools have ceased being made for the most part. But as you can see, they whip up pegs and tenons that fit perfectly within just a couple minutes. So I'm hoping we can shine some light on these really awesome tools. Now the only problem for me is these will only cut a peg four inches in. So for a lot of these, I had to cut one side and then the other, and then plane down the area in between them. Still, these saved me a lot of time in the long run. This is awesome. <laughs> we made our own bolts out of wood, essentially. Yeah, man. This is gonna be cool. Okay, so we've got most of our wood stuff taken care of. The next step will be knocking holes in this five inches of concrete here. Now, I've never done this before. I've got some hand tools that uh, we're gonna see if we can make it happen with though. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is there is some rebar kind of sticking out of the ends here. I can avoid those. I'm hoping there's not some hidden rebar through this center section. I don't know how I would get through it by hand. It, uh, <laughs> I'd have to Google it. There was rebar, and I did Google it, and essentially all I could do was start a different hole. Hammer drilling is no joke by hand. Creating these three holes took me four hours. And there's no science to it. You're essentially just emulating what a hammer drill does by hitting the chisel and then rotating. Okay, <laughs> our holes are done. Now we can go back to the wood. Thank God, <laughs> that was awful. All right, clean this stuff up and see if we can put something together. The first step in assembling our teeter-totter is attaching the ramp that gets us up onto it. To do that, I'll drill a hole for our first tree bolt that'll keep our boards held together. For this, I used what's called a tusk tenon joint. Without going into too much detail, there essentially you just create a slot in your peg so that a wedge can be hammered into place. There's our pin. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. How cool is that? Now all I had to do was cut some boards that would act as brackets holding the skinny ramp onto the concrete. To keep it all together, I had a peg run through our hole in the concrete and then a peg run through the brackets. Once we had it assembled, I simply drilled a hole through the side and pegged the pegs. This will go straight through and our tree nail will be right in the center. Before I put everything together, I made sure to give it all a healthy dose of tongue oil to help preserve things. Assembling the teeter-totter was pretty similar to the ramp, but for it, I decided to try a different wedging technique to hold the boards together. What I used was simply a wedged mortise and tenon, and all you do for it is saw down the middle of the peg and hammer a wedge into it. This was one of the methods we traditionally used back when we made ships out of wood. So, if it can hold a ship together, it can definitely hold a little teeter-totter together. Wow, that's so pretty. Look at that. Since we did the concrete drilling by hand, I ended up actually making our holes pretty slanted. Like, really slanted. <laughs> In the end, it wasn't a huge deal. I just had to add some wedges to give everything a flat surface to cinch up against. Making the braces for the teeter-totter, I again added some spacers to keep things nice and sturdy. 
And once I was done with that, I was able to finish everything up by trimming the edges down so it all had a sort of caveman look, which I really think looks cool. the project i added a sort of shoe to the bottom side of the ramp and chiseled the lip off for a smoother transition up onto it along with that i also temporarily added some old decking i had laying around in the woods to the end of the bridge this way we didn't have a bunch of otb crashes while we were attempting to ride this thing even though you guys would probably like that how we get down and what we do after is what you guys will vote on provided i can actually ride this thing but before we get into the crashes let me just say a quick thank you to U-Haul for sponsoring this episode. They are kindly giving you guys 15% off any of their huge selection of bike racks. All you have to do is go to their website and find an awesome bike rack and then enter the code BTB at checkout and you'll be good to go. Now, let's see if we can ride this thing. I honestly wasn't sure I was going to be able to, so I brought in Jay from Roots in TB and Dave from Gort Gravity for some backup in case I couldn't do it. Uh, I have not tried this yet. I'm anxious to try it because I don't know if it's going to be insanely hard or uh, medium hard. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, yeah, first go. Let's uh, see what it is. No shit. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Nice and slow. to get it and Dave got it in many less tries than I did. Yeah! Honestly, I was kind of Ooh. thinking there was no Ooh. way I was even going to finish it, but then this happened. <laughs> That's not fully it, but that makes me damn happy. And a few more tries later, this happened. Ha! 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 Tell me this camera was on. And not only did we all make it, but Dave decided to give it a go backwards. <laughs> no way! <laughs> no way! Oh, shoot! You alright? Yeah. Knock the wind out of myself. Oh. <laughs> Your bike's good. <laughs> well. Anyway, now that we know it's at least rideable in the direction we intended, it's time for you guys to decide <laughs> what we build next. It's pretty flat for the moment, so I think we could have some fun with tech features at the top. So option one for a more techy start is a trials type skinny that will roll down the bridge and come to a stop. This will force you to transition to another skinny that will be parallel to it. From there, you'll ride through that, which will have a hard left turn, so hard in fact that the back wheel will get a separate portion to ride on. And once you get to the end of that, again, you'll be stopped and forced to fully transition and flip around onto the third and final platform. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And I want to give you guys a more flowy option for the second choice, so for that, I think it would be cool to have a roll in from the bridge into a couple rollers and a gap jump. Again, the first option is this weird techie thing, and the second option is the roll-in to rollers to gap. To vote on what comes next, click here or head on over to my website. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you at the next build.